first question is, when did you start making art? And were you always a painter? Okay. Um, well, I started, it, do you include art as music and film? Or, yes. Okay. Well, uh, when I was 20 years old, uh, or 19 years old, I had to decide what would be a cool job to do. And I uh, thought being a filmmaker would be very cool because I'd made Super 8 films as a teenager. Oh, yeah. And I thought that was good, uh, in lieu of going to university, by the way. And uh, so I went to the Winnipeg Film Group in 1980 at age of 20. And I, um, I uh, then I just uh, took a workshop that was 22 weeks, a uh, film workshop. And um, from then on, I was making 16 millimeter films. And I've uh, done that all through the 80s and uh, 90s. And um, I even had a film, a feature film, Downtime in 1985, going to the Berlin Film Festival. So that was kind of a highlight. At the same time, around age 22, I was starting to do music. And I was doing, I was in various bands doing original music. Uh, no covers, just original music. Yeah. And kind of just original rock music. And I gravitated towards experimental here and there. Um, painting, I was dabbling with at that time too, on it with oils. And I did a few pretty detailed works, but it wasn't really a driving force. Um, it wasn't until the late 90s, in my late 30s, that I started to actually get seriously into painting. Okay. So, and, I, and since then, I've painted virtually, I would say probably almost on a daily basis, like easily a weekly basis. And, and for the last 20 years, pretty much, <clears throat> if not daily, then at least every two or three days I painted. Were you always sort of drawn to abstraction or have you experimented with other styles of painting? The first works that I did on oils, I did some figurative and I did also some landscape yeah. at the same time as, as doing some abstraction. The funny thing is, after that first period on oil, uh, I found a book called Dictionary of Abstract Art. It was a little pocket book with, with pictures, and it just basically A to Z abstract art painters. And that really fascinated me. And I was just like Rothko, Clifford Still, uh, people like that. Um, uh, you know, Mondrian, people like that. I was just so captivated by it that that's when I then leaned towards abstraction. And also when I discovered in the movie An Unmarried Woman, uh, from the 70s. Um, they had one of the characters that the unmarried woman was going to marry was an uh, abstract painter who used pouring techniques similar to Morris Lewis. They, they based it on Morris Lewis, the Washington painter from the 50s to the 60s, and who did, uh, who did uh, poured paintings, very large poured paintings, like 10 by 12 feet, stuff like that. And they, they used his method. When I saw that, method I was just again it was just like this I have to try. So that was really the start of pouring. That's when I really wanted to do pouring. But I've also been attracted to geometric abstraction. So I was right away very interested in geometric abstraction. Later on through the influences, much later on through the influences of people like uh, Gerhard Richter, I wanted to try the scraping and that's been very fruitful. And also um, people like uh, uh, um, Bure, uh, the Italian painter who would attach sacks to canvases, old, you know, was during wartime in Italy and he would, he would uh, they had a lot of like uh, potato sacks stuff and later in his career plastic they would attach to canvases and paint over that or even burn it and stuff like that. So that's where the material on, uh, material attached works came from. The, some of those Italian painters that would attach just garbage or whatever to their canvas. I mean, yeah. yeah. So definitely like an attraction to abstraction and then also like the use of found objects, would you say? Definitely, yeah. And um, uh, you shared with me that you wanted to have the um, Brian Eno's uh, music for airports yes. playing during the opening. Yeah. Um, so I was listening to that and I found it very like, like meditative. Um, do you find that that sort of quality is, is part of your work and do you hope that that's what people will get from your work? Yes. Uh, 
I feel with music like that, uh, that very contemplative music, um, that it goes well with detailed abstraction, you know what I mean? Or even minimalist abstraction or geometric. It's, uh, there's something about, it, it seems, the music seems to release your mind in a way to absorb the work better. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I'm, I'm sure people could be critical in saying that, you know, I'm aiding the work or enhancing it with the music, but well, I mean, at Graffiti Gallery, generally they use, they have a little bit more of a party atmosphere where they have, you know, uh, a DJ playing kind of dance music and stuff. And, uh, but that does suit graffiti more or the theme shows they had. I felt for this show, I wanted it to be something a little bit different. I'm also going to be having the lights a little dimmer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so kind of creating a space of contemplation. And yeah. also, I think I wouldn't mind a space where talking was a little bit easier if people came and they wanted to discuss the work. You know, if a couple came or, or three friends or something and they felt like discussing the work, I just felt that I, I wanted that to be more effortless. Yeah, so yeah. it's a bit more of like an experience rather than just an exhibition of painting. Yes, yeah. Very cool. Um, what other questions did I have for you? Um, in one of your works is titled Ghosts, and the work behind you is Temporary Ghosts? Yeah, Temporary Ghosts. Temporary Ghosts. Um, has, are you uh, inspired by like spiritualism at all, or any of that? type of that's an interesting question because actually I'm I'm one of those people like I'm an atheist I'm not um, I don't I'm not like believe in a Christian God or anything and, and very often atheists will say that they're spiritual too and uh, yeah. maybe people that you know believe in have religious beliefs will say that's a contradiction but I don't believe it is because I think an uh, art in general it'd be hard to come up with a formula as to why a work works you know, like to, you know, run it through AI program and say, well, this is why a Jackson Pollock works, or this is why a Greg Hanek works. Uh, I think there's that thing that's missing in looking at art, all art, that you have to bring to it yourself. And I think that's a part of uh, my definition of spiritual, is the idea of a two-way communication between something unknown and something solid like me, like a, a human being, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then like the idea, I guess, of like hauntings, like there's the term like hauntology, which is related to hauntology. Yes. So, like, I know you're into the uh, philosophical side of art making. Totally, and, yeah. And uh, studying those things. So is, is that an influence in some of your works at all? Uh, psycho or philosophy in general or hauntology? Um, I guess philosophy in general, and then maybe more specifically, like as just leaning into the ghosts titles. Yeah. Um, I mean, philosophy. I've definitely read a lot of art theory by philosophers, so I think that is interesting. Um, um, I'm not so much into uh, say that would have been Derrida who came up with that phrase. Yes. Uh, I mean, I like Derrida, but I don't, I haven't read a lot of his art theory. Um, but I think for a work like this, uh, I think there's the, I like the idea of a, of a line coming, like a solid line, but then breaking into kind of something less secure. Uh, I like the movement from secure and uh, objecthood into, into uh, a more diminished state somehow. And that's what I think, you know, that's a ghost in essence, I guess, would be a human being having turned into uh, between human being and non-human being. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like in some ways. Because, you know, ghosts in, in fiction do communicate. They, they talk to people. Yeah. They have the appearance of humans, but they're not human in a way. So, I mean, I think that's where those two works uh, come in where the line starts out as solid and then mutates into something, uh, again, like less solid. Cool, very cool. Um, would you say that your time working at graffiti gallery and being exposed to graffiti and street art has changed your style at all? 
I think uh, some of the color theories of graffiti have been interesting uh, because uh, very often if you look at uh, detailed work of graffiti, there'll be some very bright oranges or greens or purples and stuff like that. But if you look harder, you'll see underneath it, they're like off greens or off or grays and stuff. And they really are very good at making colors pop. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so um, definitely a few of the works in the show have black backgrounds. And so I, I think I could have gotten an influence in that way of just, you know, like some knowledge in, in how it pops you know, how colors pop. Uh, but also, I mean, some of the graffiti artists that have come to Graffiti Valley have moved, have, do graffiti still, but have moved on to other forms of painting, uh, where they've either moved to some forms of abstraction or other types of uh, painting that tell stories or create environments. And I've definitely learned from them uh, how you know, some bolder uses of color that you wouldn't see. And I'm, I'm guessing that comes from actual, the practice of graffiti as opposed to art school. Yeah. Some of the colors that I've seen people use in creating like, king, like worlds that they've done on the walls, like really have had arresting colors, but they worked. So I, I'm not sure an art, an art uh, theory course or a practical art uh, university course would, would lean you in that direction. Right yeah, interesting. Um, and I think my last question is, if not really a question, but can you speak to um, like the methods that you use, like the paint pouring and maybe some of the like color theory like you touched on already with like, Yes, um, for sure a big thing in my work is I embrace randomness a lot. Uh, not totally, I uh, leave room for discretion, but very often in, in especially geometric works, I'll do a large percentage of the lines by randomly mixing two colors together that I have uh, and then maybe even adding a third color to that. And then from there I might move on and then start choosing colors. I want the sort of challenge of, I want to be surprised by the work so that I, I'm kind of in survival mode where I'm like, you know, I'm like, Okay, what do I do now? As opposed to if I always choose the colors, I worry that I'll get into a repetitive pattern, that I'll start just repeating what I've done normally. Now, of course, by using randomness a lot, I could also be getting that sense too, but oh, well, the ghost is a perfect example. Uh, I started doing it, totally choosing the colors of the lines and doing it, and I did it over, I painted over it, I did it, I painted over again. I did, it started easily three or four times. And it, what happened was finally, I was just kind of at my wit's end and I decided to use random colors and random ordering of the colors. And it just opened my mind up to, to the possibilities of what could happen in that. And then I finished the piece doing total randomness and yeah. now it finally works. So, uh, and the other methods I use are, uh, I like to apply material to the cover of it and that's just to get bizarre textures or weird textures interplaying with the light. And uh, another method is the, is the pouring with uh, latex, with acrylic latex of uh, water down in different viscosities, you know? So I might pour a lot, I might let a line run with gravity, and, uh, which is say 70% uh, water, 30% paint. And then within that line, pour a 50-50 mixture of paint and water. And then you just can study the reactions that they do. And, and very often, because it's gravity assisting, uh, what I'm doing, yeah, I'm getting feelings of like a river shot from, a river system shot from space or something, like the sedimentation is taking place and it's doing, you know, it's, it's doing what I'm not intending, it's, I'm working with nature to do it. Uh, and other things too, uh, or you'll get like, people will say my work reminds them, the pouring work reminds them of, of undersea things and that. And I think it's essentially the same techniques that nature's using to create coral or or undersea vegetation or whatever yeah. that I'm implying here by by using gravity and different viscosities, right? Yeah. So, um, uh, I, I'm, one thing I will say about the Graffiti Gallery show is that I generally, I don't have a studio, so I work in my apartment and I'm generally working in works from, you know, six by six inches to maybe four by four at the most. So, a couple of works here are like eight by four, it's a five by four, 
uh, six by by two, uh, things like that. And I, and again, behind me is a twelve by ten mural. And I just it's just so great to work on that larger scale because on the small scale, it's this: it's your wrist working, and maybe your a bit of your elbow. But on the larger scale, you know, your body it's like dancing, like you're getting you're having the rhythm of the body is moving and like you know you're you're feeling your body when you're feeling you're putting your bodily effort into the work itself and it's just a much different feeling i like both i like the small works and i like the large works but i want to continue uh working on the large work somehow amazing yeah. i think that's all the questions i have is there anything else you need to add want to add well, I'll just say that, you know, uh, working with Pat and Carrie, uh, Pat uh, Lazo and per uh, Carrie Parnell at the Graffiti Gallery has been excellent. They've definitely, like, worked past their um, call of duty for me and uh, just, you know, and the staff has been fantastically, you know, warm to me and uh, really encouraging uh, for the show. And you know, it's uh, it's a, it can be intimidating, like putting your work up for. I mean, I'm a musician, a filmmaker, and a performance artist, and a painter. And you know, painting is one of the toughest things to show people. There's a certain intimacy to it that, you know, in music you can kind of hide behind your instruments or the sound or your fellow musicians. And filmmaker, you're you know, you could sit in the audience and watch a film and know they, people wouldn't even know it's you. But for painting, you know, it's just. It's a very intimate thing, and it's like revealing an in intimate side of yourself to to people that you know you don't know how they're going to react. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Scary but cool. Scary but cool. <laughs> well, I'm excited. That's going to be my next show. Scary but. That's going to be the next. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Scary but cool.